G'day everyone, Dan here. Uh, welcome to the brewery here under the um, under the house in Townsville here. We've got this granny flat here set up and um, I've got the kitchen, I'll set it up into my microbrewery. Um, it's pretty straightforward. I've got my fermentation fridge there, just an old fridge I picked up while I was in Canberra and that's essential up here in North Queensland, brewing in the tropics. It's uh, certainly a different way of brewing up here than it was down in Canberra. Um, I picked up my nano brewery a couple of months ago and this is the brew in a basket system and I love this thing I've, I've been using it for a while now and um, yeah I, I absolutely rate the thing I've still got a lot of ways to go in my brewery set up here I want to build a bench here and do a few other things buy quick disconnects for everything so I'm not always having to use the clamps here unscrewing them and, and uh, having to put them where I need them for the recirculation wherever but um, on the whole I'm pretty happy with it so today I'm doing the Galaxy Pills. This is a Cheeky Peak recipe from the Cheeky Peak Brewery down in Albury. And I've been doing their recipes for a long time. So I really like their beers and their simple recipes. I've got them all on their Facebook page, a Cheeky Peak Brewery Facebook page and their home brewer. They've also got their home brew ambassadors page on Facebook as well. So I'm not paid by them. It's not, not sponsored by them or anything. This is just their beer recipes and I'm not going to take credit for them um, as they the ones that I think they sell them in their packs as well but anyway I go to my local home brew shop here in Townsville at Currajong and uh, I think it's the um, only only home brew shop north of uh, north of the Sunshine Coast actually here in Queensland so I'm lucky to have one in town as the further north you go it's harder and harder to get brewing brewing products especially grains but anyway with no further ado this recipe here today is a fairly simple recipe and um, it's literally just five kilograms of Pilster malt and I'm using Joe White Wilson, and I've got 400 grams of flaked oats. Um, up here, I can't get flaked oats or flaked wheat from the home brew shop, so the oats I'm using are just rolled oats that I get from um, flaked oats from the um, from the uh, supermarket. So that that'll do me. I'm not too concerned. It's a bummer I can't get flaked wheat because I really love using that in some of my beers. But yeah, so I'm adding that. Uh, I'll add that to this and stir that in. Um, and I'll leave this here at, for about one hour. So this will be a, um, be a one hour mash at 65 degrees Celsius for this, for this beer. Now I've got the 50 litre pot here and so I'm doing a, a 23 litre, 24 litre batch. And in here I've got 30 litres of water at the moment. Actually 33, well it's that when it was about 33. So I'll lift that out. Now, there shouldn't be too much sparging involved. Not like my old system where I had a small esky. And um, that's in an older video. One of my older videos, you'll see my old system set up, which was just a homemade setup, but it worked really well. There was nothing wrong with that um, with that setup at all. And I actually was using it up till this year, but I kind of had a stuck sparge and I got really over, you know, having to do everything. It, it just, it was, there was a lot of effort involved in it, like, you know, I have to boil, sit there and boil water on the stove and put my thermometer into it and make sure it was 73, 74 degrees. And, you know, then I'd hope the mashing temperature was, you know, when I added the grains and bring it down to 66, 65. And I could never get my mashing temperatures that accurate with it. Whereas this here, I've got the digital control box that comes with it and I've set that to 65 degrees. Then I'll then, I'll turn the pump on and recirculate this this mash as uh, the waters I'm mashing it in and uh, it'll stay at the same temperature the whole time. So I don't need to worry about that anymore with this system. Uh, the one thing I did like about this nano brewery is it's, everything's external to the system unlike other brewery systems. Um, you know, the pump's separate, so it's not sitting here. If it does stuff out, I don't have to worry about trying to take the whole thing apart or replacing the whole system like I would with others. I just Replace the 70 80 dollar pump. I probably will get a better pump eventually, but this is fine for now. Um, there's a lot of better gear out there than probably that one, but you know, it costs money, so and I'm too busy spending money on barbecues and fishing gear at the same time as brewing. This is only to save me money and beer so I can spend it on fishing and barbecuing, really. But I do enjoy brewing, so that's it. I'm gonna leave that for an hour. Um, I've got this, this has got the recirculation lid on it too with the recirculation ball and this thing's really good. I might get a close up of that in a minute and just show you how it works. So I'll turn all that on and turn the pump on. Ooh. 
and that's working now. Yep, you don't want to lift it up too high because it will actually spray out the side. But that's cool. That'll recirculate the wart now. Now I'll come back when I'm ready to go on with the next step of this, this process in this beer. So I've had this mashing for one hour now. I'm just going to turn this pump off. Right one. Turn the pump off and um, I'll get this basket out. So it helps to have something to grip the basket uh, with. I've got the handle here, but it gets pretty hot in here. So I always keep a little bit of a bucket spare just for that to come out and turn that off. Silly me. So get this basket out. This has a little hook, so I'll just grab something to help me with that. Oh, shirt here. And there we have it. So what I'll do now is I'll look at the volume. I will spar just, just a touch, probably with a couple of litres of water, just to rinse whatever residual sugars are in there out. But I'll let that come up to volume now. I'll just give that five minutes to come up to volume. Um, just an interesting thing, like when I first did this beer down in Canberra, I went and got the uh, grain bill for it, and I wondered why I put oats in it. And I think the bloke down at the home brew shop in Canberra, um, Ian, said it was for head retention, which I thought was funny in a pill, so just putting an adjunct like oats in, but it's, it's there for the head retention apparently, so don't quote me on that. I'm pretty sure he knows what he's talking about, so um, he was fairly helpful. So what we're going to do now is I'll just come back in about five minutes and sort my life out, and we'll go to the next step, sparging. So I'm not going to worry about doing a sparge on this. It's sitting up around 27, 28 litres now. I could put 500 mils through, but with the recirculation, the whole time it's been mashing in, I don't think I need it. Um, I don't, unfortunately, I broke my um, my uh, alco meter, so I can't do a reading, an uh, original gravity reading on this, or a final gravity reading, because it died, um, unfortunately, but it's still going to have alcohol in it, so I'm not too concerned. So I'm bringing this now up to the boil. I do have a ring burner, but I'm not using it today because I don't have any gas in my gas bottle, so I'm just relying completely on the system. So I'll bring that up to the boil. I use a hop spider in mine. So this recipe calls for, I'll have to check, uh, double check it, but I believe it's, I'll get back to you on that when, when I put the hops in, how much hops in, but it's Halatau hops. Um, and you're dry hopping it with 80 grams of, uh, of galaxy hops, hence why it's the galaxy pills. So I'll come back when I'm ready to put the hops in and uh, we'll do a 60 minute boil on the hops and then we'll go from there. Okay, so I've brought this up to the boil and uh, I've folded all the um, foam back into the um, into the wort. I'm adding a 40 gram addition of Hallertau hops to this. Then I'm going into the hop spider like that and we'll come back. That'll be a 60 minute boil. So I'll get the timer on now for a 60 minute boil on that those Hallertau hops. At 15 minutes, I'm going to add, or 10 minutes, I'm going to add a Werfop tablet to that, and that'll be it for the boil. Okay, so I've had this going now for 60 minutes on the boil, and um, I Werfoped it about 10 minutes ago. So I've done that. I've added my um, my, chill, my chiller into it. This is a brand new chiller. I made this one. This is a copper chiller. I did have a uh, stainless steel one, which is in there. I might actually do a comparison with that one day, because it's phenomenal the difference of how quickly this works. So I'll remove those hops now. They've done 60 minutes, and um, I'll get the chiller on. I'll just turn this heating element off. Um, I'll reset that so I know what the temperature is in a minute, but I've made the mistake before of uh, leaving it on and wondering why it wasn't chilling so quick, because I've left it set to 80 degrees after doing a whirlpool addition of hops, and it was sitting at 35, 36, and yeah, the water in town was hot, but it's not that hot. Um, now, being a lager, I'm going to do this a little bit different. I'll chill this down, I'll come back and explain the process of how I'm going to pitch the yeast in about five minutes. Alright, so we're pretty good now. I've um, chilled this down to a reasonable temperature. I'm not going to get it down to a, a pitching temperature, which I'm going to use for the yeast I'm using, which is W3074 um, safe ale yeast, um, lager yeast. So I'm going to ferment this at 12 degrees for about nine or ten days. So what I have to do is I'm just going to put this in the fermenter. I've got the pressure fermenter here. It's just the um, Firmzilla all-rounder. Um, just add some sanitizer in there. Embrace the foam. It's all good. Um, it's just the no-rinse sanitizer, so that foam will be fine. 
Um, get this bugger off. And I'll fill this keg up. So basically, I'll, I'll get this up to about the volume I need, probably 23, 24 litres in here. About 23. I'm going to throw this in the fridge until it cools down to 12 degrees. So I've got the temperature controlled fridge there, and I'll put the probe to the outside of this. Um, I've got a yeast starter I put on last night. It's been going um, since 8 o'clock last night. It's now midday. And I've been fermenting that. That's just been going at 15 degrees. So I'll put that in once I've got this down to 12 degrees. Even if it's 15 degrees, I'll probably throw it in then and, and let it reduce down an extra 3 degrees overnight. I'm heading out to the reef early in the morning fishing, so it might be a matter of doing it at 8 or 9 o'clock tonight, <coughs> um, depending on the temperature. But this fridge will chill this down reasonably well. It won't take too long to get it down to 12, 13 degrees. So what I'll do then, like I said, because I won't do any more shooting on this until we come to dry, um, to dry hop it, is I'll bring this down to 12 degrees. I'll then pitch my yeast. I'm going to ferment it at 9 degrees. I'm oh, sorry, at 12 degrees for about 8, 9 days. At about the 8 or 9 day mark, what I'm going to do then, I'll just check how much I've got. About there. Um, at the 8 or 9 day mark, what I'll do is I'll raise it up a degree a day um, to start the diacetyl race. So, Day 10, it'll go to 13, day four, um, 11, 14 degrees, 15, 16, 17, 18 degrees. So the day it hits 18 degrees, and I'll probably at the same time, I'll dry hop it for three days. So I'll throw the dry hops in at about the 15 degree mark, 14 to 15 degree mark. So that they've got three to four days of hop time. Um, I'll leave that then um, for a day, and then I'll cold crash it as well. So. Depending on when I do the dry hops, I'll let you know then. We'll come to that in a future part of the video. But yeah, basically that's what I'm doing. So I'll get the, everything on this. I'm also going to pressure ferment this. So this will be at, uh, you can see that this here will be at about 10 psi. And I've got my pressure gauge here. I'm not going to worry about putting it on until I pitch the yeast. So get a decent pressure gauge. Like I had one that, I had another fermenter actually blow up because of the pressure gauge. I'd set it, but it had caught, and yeah, and the whole area ended up messy. So anyway, we'll come back when we're ready to dry hop this in a few days' time. Um, but yeah, that's that's the gist of it. Um, I always do a yeast starter for my lagers as well. A pilsner is a type of lager, so. All right, we'll see you when we're dry hopping. Okay, so I've been fermenting this beer. It fermented for 10, 11 days before I started upping the temperature on it. It was about 10 days, I think, and I upped the temperature from 12 to 13 degrees, and then 13 to 14 degrees, and then worked my way up slowly. So it's been four days now since I've been ramping it up, and sorry about the noise, I'm doing another brew today, just a normal pale ale. And I pressure fermented this. Um, I had it sitting at seven and a half PSI, roughly under pressure. And the reason I'm bumping the temperature up is just the diacetyl rest, so you'll get you obviously, you produce alcohol, carbon dioxide, and other compounds. Um, the yeast is able to eat, um, reactivate and consume the diacetyls and other things. It's too much science for me. But anyway, I'm about to dry hop this. So being the Galaxy um, Pilsner, this has got 80 grams of Galaxy hops, which are there, which are going to go in here. So I'm going to ramp this temperature up to 17 again this afternoon and then 18 tomorrow afternoon. And then give it a day at 18 degrees and I'll cold crash it than for a day before I keg it. So the contact time of the hops is probably going to be about three to four, probably four days contact time. Obviously three at the hot, at the temperature 16, 17, 18 degrees and then one day when I cold crash it. And within 24 hours um, it'll be down to the kegging temperature and then I'll keg it, obviously lager it in the keg. So yeah, I'm just going to dry hop this now but I won't show you that. I'm just going to take all the top apart sterilize it and add the hops. So welcome back to this Galaxy Pilsner video. Uh, this is the beer here now after roughly about eight weeks of lagering and it's become quite clear so eight nine weeks. I actually brewed this video first but the Hoppy Hefeweizen came in last week because it uh, was ready to drink first so it's looking fairly clear I'm quite happy with it. It's got quite a nice banana ester flavour to it or smell to it. I've tried it 
a couple of days ago, me and my friend, and basically when I said, what do you think of it? He just said, banana. So he was right. It is literally, it's hard to explain. I would have thought the, the galaxy hops, I would have thought the galaxy hops would have had a real galaxy flavor to it, but it's actually almost brought out that banana ester flavor of a pilsner. If you've ever had pilsner or brewed pilsner before at home, you get those esteries, esters that I often compare to ripe banana or unripe banana. Whereas the the galaxy just, it smashes you in the face with banana esters. I, I don't know what it is. Well, that's what I think anyway, and that's what James thought. So that there is the galaxy pills. It's actually quite a refreshing, quite a nice beer if you're into that sort of style, which I really like my pills list. So until next time, guys, take care.